1.4, we're going to talk about the carbon cycle. The learning objective is to explain the steps and reservoir interactions in the carbon cycle. The carbon cycle is the movement of atoms and molecules containing the element carbon, what do you know, between sources and sinks. A source is where it comes from, a sink is where it gets stored. So for example, in these or in this diagram, the source, like for instance in photosynthesis, is the atmosphere, and the sink is the, the trees. In decomposition, the source would be the organic matter, the sink would be the atmosphere. When we're creating um, energy from fossil fuels, the source would be the, the whatever organic matter has been buried for a long, long time, and we are putting it out into the atmosphere. Uh, that would be the sink. So it just depends on where that flow is going. Some of the reservoirs can hold on to a very long period of time, whereas some can hold on to a very short period of time. So in that example from before, uh, plants and animals are, they don't hold on to their carbon for as long as, for example, um, deep underground deposits of fossil fuels. They've been there for millions of years, um, and they can stay there for even longer. It's, in fact, naturally they would stay there a lot longer, but it's, it's humans that are taking that, that, reservoir time balance and throwing it off by taking all of that those fossil fuels and putting it up in the atmosphere so that's when, when we talk about like all the increased carbon dioxide we're not saying we're creating more carbon dioxide um, or like creating more carbon in general we're just taking it from a place where it should be stored for a long period of time and putting it in a place that's it's not designed to hold that much um, in such a short amount of time uh this oh yeah this just kind of demonstrates what I was just saying, that the long-term carbon reservoirs are things like fossil fuels. Short-term, they don't hold on to the carbon very long, whether it's because of their life cycle um, or just because that carbon is just constantly, you know, flowing through. You want to know the difference between photosynthesis and cellular respiration. Um, photosynthesis is uh, primary producers taking carbon dioxide and water and then taking in that solar energy to move the, those particles around to create glucose and, and oxygen. And then respiration is the opposite of that process. Uh, I'm trying to remember, I don't think you have to know the exact formula for the AP exam. You can get away with saying carbon dioxide and water and sunlight making glucose and oxygen. Um, but you know, it never hurts to have this memorized. It just makes you look smarter, which is never a bad thing. Decomposition. Uh, leads to the storage of carbon over millions of years, and the burning of fossil fuels moves that stored carbon into the atmosphere very quickly. So this is the biggest part, like why do we study the carbon cycle in the first place, is because of the impact the carbon cycle is having on our, our climate. So, you know, millions of years ago, all these plants, um, some animals were decomposed by bacteria, and then, you know, stored deep, deep underground, and they're like, whoa, this is really cool. I'm going to burn this. But that's bad. All right, so this is the carbon cycle I want you guys to copy down. Um, it shows the, the flows pretty well in the sinks and all that stuff and the processes of how it gets there. And then once you're done with that, explain the steps and reservoir interactions in the carbon cycle. You don't have to go like super in-depth, but maybe just talk like general, like what's, what are the big things to get from that diagram?